Shabbat shalom. At our initial meeting for B'nai Mitzvah students and their families last Sunday, our slide on appropriate clothing began with a verse from our Parsha. Do not build stairs upon my altar, as you shall not expose your nakedness upon it. Back in the time of the Mishkan, the tabernacle, even if they were wearing the pants prescribed to the Kohanim, the Israelites were commanded to be extra cautious of showing too much of themselves while ascending to the altar. Our Torah shows an awareness of the reality that stairs and platforms make skirts or ancient robes, in their case, seem shorter than they do at a lower level. <laughs> While on Sunday we presented this verse as a light introduction to details families should think about when shopping for B'nai Mitzvah clothing for their children and for their families, Modesty is one of those topics that more than a few of you have brought up as a concern in private conversation. As I've heard from some of you, you feel discomfort about the way some of those around you dress in synagogue, and yet, because of the welcoming nature of this synagogue, you do not know how or whether to compassionately address the discomfort that you feel. Higid lecha adam ma tov. You have been told, humankind, what is good. Uma Adonai doresh mimcha ki im asot mishpat v'yahavat chesed v'atzneya lechet im elohecha. You've been told what is good and what Adonai asks from you only to do justice and to love kindness and to walk modestly with your God. The prophet Micah introduces a great conflict when we strive for modesty in the synagogue. We strive to do justice, not to promote a culture of sexual objectivity or sexism, to be kind, to welcome people as they are into our holy space, and also to be able to walk modestly with God, to maintain a meditative focus on self, on God, and on community while in this space. The conflicts inherent in Micah's request of us begs the questions. What should modesty look like in Jewish space, in our case, at Congregation Beth Torah? How should we, or even should we, encourage modesty with intentional compassion at Beth Torah? While ancient and modern halachic texts disagree on what exactly constitutes modesty in dress, these texts tend to agree on the importance of humility, intentional space, and consideration of others. When we pay attention to what we wear, especially in a space set aside as sacred, we practice the balance we must make every day between expressing ourselves and showing off. Alongside Rambam's instructions for all genders to refrain from exposing nakedness, when he teaches about modesty, he writes in terms of tone of voice and volume of voice, posture, and the topics a person chooses to speak about. As the more modern Rabbi Norman Lamb teaches about the way that Sniyut is discussed in Orthodox circles, he writes, how low or how high a hemline, the length of sleeves, the form of dress, the number of square millimeters of skin that may be exposed, it would be a pity to limit our understanding of modesty of Sniyut to that which can be measured by a ruler. Before focusing on guidelines about how members and visitors must dress in this space, we must examine the humility with which we speak and act here. Our attention to Lashon Hara, the ways in which we present our opinions and the pauses we give to allow others to speak. Before we begin to address the topic of clothing, we have to establish the overall atmosphere of humility, the assertion that each and every one of us is made in the image of God and deserves both general compassion and access to this holy space. Only once we have explored a more general modesty can we begin to uncover texts that explain the value of modest dress in a synagogue space. In Mishnah Brachot, we learn that, quote, a person stands for the Amidah only in a state of mindfulness. Similarly, in the Shulchan Aruch, or Echaim, we learn that an uncovered handbreadth on a woman in a customarily covered location makes it forbidden to recite the Shema in her presence. Now, 
very important note here. While much of our modern discussion of Sniyut, especially in orthodoxy, objectifies women, it's very clear in our halachic text that bare skin in men or that culturally considered inappropriate clothing in men is just as hal halachically problematic to prayer. Note too that the Shulchan Aruch uses the language customarily covered location. Rather than defining what parts of the body are considered inappropriate, he acknowledges the importance of cultural context in creating these definitions. When a person is distracted by clothing outside the bounds of what seems appropriate in a particular space, it's difficult to pray and learn with full attention. That distraction can either come from another person or from oneself. If, for example, that clothing needs constant readjust readjusting with every standing or sitting or bowing. Our challenge, however, is that, again, the cultural context is always shifting and changing. An article of clothing that one person considers disrespectful may seem appropriate, even respectful to somebody else. Ultimately, we are each responsible for the movements of our hearts and our eyes, as exemplified in our third paragraph of the Shema. We cannot expect others to dress according to our personal standards just to make us more comfortable. And yet, the Jewish people are also commanded to love and honor those around us as we love and honor ourselves. As Rabbi Danya Ruttenberg writes, care and concern for the feeling of others is at the heart of modest behavior. This does not mean that under all circumstances one must dress for the most easily offended denominator, but rather one should understand that others' reactions and impressions matter, that it's crucial to live in connection with other people as well as with God. At Congregation Beth Torah, we have the obligation as individuals and community to define and encourage our cultural norms in a way that honors everyone who enters this space, regardless of the way they dress and the way that they wish others would dress. Practically, our fulfillment of this compassionate modesty begins with the way that we each individually dress. As Shabbat is, different, is a different day of the week, and as this space is set up with the intention of prayer, we can begin by setting aside clothing specifically for Shabbat services. When we are shopping for new clothes or keeping in mind what needs to not be in the laundry basket on Friday night or Saturday morning, we choose our clothing with the intent of hidur mitzvah, of beautifying the mitzvah of celebrating Shabbat, perhaps of being one step one step more special than we would wear during the week. For those bringing guests or children, rather than critiquing clothing after it is already on, we can set an intention the day before with details about the norms of our synagogue dress. Practically, our B'nai Mitzvah guide re recommends for shoulders and midriffs to be covered and for skirts, dresses, and shorts to be around knee length. Divisive or provocative language on shirts and pins should also be considered. At the same time, we as a congregation must practice some patience as our next generation of Jewish leaders explores their own versions of self-expression, including the self-expression of ignoring parents' requests about clothing. <laughs> Remember, please, your own search for identity and self-confidence during different stages in your life. As a community, we must take the words of our Talmudic rabbis into consideration. One should throw oneself into a fiery furnace rather than shame another in public. No one here is entitled to criticize a guest or other member on account of their clothing in this space, even passively, even as a whisper to a friend or family member, no matter this person's age. When we talk about sniyut, we must keep in mind the ways in which policing women's clothing has led to self, low self-confidence, societal inequalities, and lack of trust in a woman's testimony so many times in the past. <clears throat> While we have encouraged sniyut in different ways over the years at Congregation Beth Torah, we have a meeting this week about how we can do so with real compassion, with sensitivity, and with clarity. 
If you have suggestions for how this should or should not be done, please let me know. If you want to be a part of the conversation, either giving your input or being a part of this meeting, please let me know. As with so many other topics of conversation at Beth Torah, this is where our communal value of participation shines. As we examine what we wear, when and where, we can combat the negativity of what not to wear with the positive ways we can express holiness with what we do wear. In this space, for example, so many of us choose not only to dress up for Shabbat at home, but also when we're here to wear tali tot, to wear a kippah during the week, to wear tefillin, to express the ways this place is special or different. Our children's closet in this building and our donation box in the parking lot are always open for contributions of clothing. The network of community ministries is open just a couple of miles away with a closing closet for those registered for its programming. Yes, clothing can be and should be a huge part of our personal expression of what it means to be made in the image of God. And at the same time, our personal choices of what to wear and what to do with that clothing once we are done with it can and must also reflect our participation in a community that is intertwined with and responsible for one another. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>